Hello, my fellow investors, and welcome back to the series that we stopped for a little bit, mainly because earnings season was just absolutely bonkers. But we're going to restart it back, guys. So I'm not going to take on your recommendations. Now, for anybody who's new on the channel, I did this a lot. And the reason why I stopped is because, again, earnings season, just the first month of every quarter, like the first couple weeks of, the, of every quarter, it's just absolutely insane. So I really wanted to focus on that. But it's starting to settle down now a little bit. There isn't a lot of companies this week that I really want to focus on. So let's actually take a few of your guys' recommendations. Now, I already had a few of these in the past, so we're going to take a look at this today. And the way that I used to do it before is I used to do it by date. However, that I found that it was just taking really, really long time to get to... Uh, some of your guys's recommendations so i decided to use now this kind of numbering system to i guess auto generate it but i just came up with a great idea and instead of using number system how about we just spin the wheel right let's just spin the wheel and wherever it lands that's the one that we're going to do so let's see which stock analysis we're going to do today and if you guys saw the thumbnail then you guys already know but let us see what stock we're doing and if we spin the wheel We got FRG, so there it is, we have a winner, FRG, so FRG was recommended by MRG365, now I don't know if you're still watching, you may have unsubscribed or you know, you may just not have checked this out for a while, but nonetheless though, we're going to do guys the company FRG for the commenter MRG365. So here we have the website for the company FRG, otherwise known as Franchise Group Inc. And right off the bat, guys, I personally have no idea what this company does. This is the first time I've ever seen them. So let's come over here and check out the company profile. We got Franchise Group Inc. owns and operates franchise and franchisable businesses. It operates through six segments. Vitamin Shop? Shop? Not really sure how to say that word. Pet Supplies Plus Bad Cock? I don't know if I'm allowed to say that on YouTube. American Freight, Buddies, and Sylvan. The vitamin shop segment operates as an omni-channel specialty retailer of vitamins, minerals, herbs, specialty su supplements, sports, nutrition, and other health and wellness productions. The Pet Supply Plus operates as an omni-channel retail chain and franchisor of pet supplies and services that includes premium brands, proprietary private labels, and specialty products, as well as offers grooming, pet wash, and other services. And pretty much there's going to go on as to like what the other ones do. Now, that's actually interesting because I personally do not know how, I like, I don't think I've ever been into any one of these stores, but honestly, it's it's almost like a conglomeration, and I'm not really a fan of conglomerate companies, that's, that's actually the reason why when it came to 3M, it took me a while for me to actually, uh, invest in them because i personally don't like don't like conglomerates because there's just a lot of stuff that they do and i like companies that have like one specific thing that they're really good at as opposed to a bunch of different things that they're kind of half good at so rather than there that's kind of my opinion of what the company does now let's come into their earnings summary because their earnings are actually coming up in about two days as if you guys are seeing this we can re revisit the earnings if you guys wish to do so but we can see here that the previous earnings was on february 28th and eps normalized actual came in at 47 cents beat by 26 cents eps gap actual negative eight cents beat by four cents revenue actual 1.12 billion dollars which is beat by 81.64 million dollars very very interesting and as of of May 10th's earnings, we can see that it's estimated at 53 cents for the EPS normalized estimate, a penny for the EPS gap estimate, and $1.1 billion. You can see that, well, two revisions total and all revisions are to the downside. So that's very, very interesting to see. Let's come now into the calculator. We got guys a ticker symbol FRG market cap of $1 billion and a PE of NA, meaning that they have negative income, which we just saw when it came to their earnings. Current share price of $29.41. This price guys is down almost 23% on the one year and year to date is actually up 15.2%. 52 week range, it is $22.45 the lowest to $44.25 at the highest. And in fact, looking at this guys, 
as of Friday close, this company went up 3.23%, but then again, so did every other company on Friday, right? Everything was pretty much green on Friday, May 5th. So that's not really surprising. Now, looking further into this company, we can see that they do pay out a dividend of $2.50, which is a yield of 8.5% that's insane that's absolutely crazy like straight up insanity so when we take a look at how much we get for the five thousand seven hundred twenty five dollars guys yeah um that's going to be like four hundred dollars or something like that a year which is crazy now the payout ratio is horrendous 107 percent and if we take a look back at what kind of industry or sector this company is in, you can see that it is in the consumer discretionary sector, not a REIT. So right then and there, that's already bad to see. If this was a REIT and the payout ratio on Seeking Alpha showed 107, I'd be like, okay, well, that's pretty standard for REITs. The fact that it's not, though, very, very concerning. This means that they're taking on debt to pay out that dividend. Now, on top of that, take a look at this five-year CAGR growth grade, guys. 31.33%. That's absurd with two consecutive years of dividend payment. That to me is a little bit sketch. So coming into the history, we can see that the reason why this is the case is because they did not pay out the dividend on 2019. Now looking at this on the 10 year, we can see that, okay, oh, they've only had one instance though, where they cut it. I don't necessarily know why they cut it. Definitely do more research on that. But if we actually go on the max, well, actually, yeah, the max is essentially the 10 year. They started paying out this dividend in 2015. And you can see that from 2015, April 12, 2015, all the way up to July 25th, 2018, pretty consistent. No increases though, but pretty consistent at around 16 cents. They stopped paying it at around like 2019 and yeah, and close to the beginning of 2020. And then they reinstated again with 25 cents. They then, uh, let's actually see here. Yeah, then they then paid it for the entirety of 2020. And then they started increasing it from 2020 to 2021 to 2022. So far, no increases yet in 2023. Nonetheless, though, that's the reason why it, it's looking like it's not too bad. The problem is, is this five-year CAGR can be a little bit misleading because they can cut it. And seeing that this payout ratio is 107%, most likely they will cut it in the future. Ex-dividend date passed as of March 30th, payout date was on April 14th, and they pay their dividends quarterly. Now let's actually take a look at what kind of payout ratio we got in regards to the free cash flow, because the free cash flow, it is what companies use to pay off that dividend. So we can see that with this $2.50 in annual dividends and their current shares outstanding, they pay out $87.25 million every single year in dividends alone. If we take the five-year average free cash flow and subtract this 87 million, guys, we got negative 86 million dollars in the five-year average free cash flow. And as of their last year's free cash flow was even worse, negative 178.65. That's really, really bad. You can see these payout ratios are just absolutely insane, right? Negative 95.5 for the last year's free cash flow and what is this, 7,000? This is just, these numbers just make absolutely no sense in the slightest. So I personally don't think that in regards to um, this kind of payout ratio, guys. It's I just don't personally think that this dividend is safe in regards to pretty much all of these payout ratios that we're seeing right here and even the payout ratio that Seeking Alpha is showing us. It's just not a healthy dividend to begin with. So let's come now into the actual fundamentals. Starting with the net income, we got five years ago of negative $102.6 million to one year ago of negative $68.6 million. That is an increase of 33%. But take a look at this, guys. This graph is just all over the place, right? Mainly in the negative. Two years, they were in the positive. Three years ago, that's when, you know, that's when... COVID was happening, they got a bunch of net income, guys. $363.8 million in net income came crashing down the following year. So this is all over the place. I don't like this one bit. Massive outlier. Um, I guess it's a little bit better seeing that they went up on the five-year scale, but honestly, that to me doesn't really tell me much. So I'm going to put, guys, as a grade of 5%. Looking now into the free cash flow, we see something very, very similar, right? Negative $69.1 million five years ago to negative 91.4. So this is actually even worse. Not only do we have an outlier here four years ago and even three years ago, but just on the five-year scale, it's going down, right? It's going down, which is not really good to see. And seeing that they're at negative $91.4 million in the free cash flow, guys, that's not good at all. 
Now, why is this free cash flow negative? Well, two reasons. Either the cash from operations is in the negative, which is actually really bad, or the capital expenditures exceeds the cash from operations, which is still bad, but it's understandable in some cases. If we take a look at their actual cash from operations, we can see that it's been in the negative for more times than it's been in the positive. Two years, it was in the positive, and that was four and three years ago. Ironically enough, the two years that were, well, that the cash flow was in the positive. So this isn't good to see, guys. As you can see, it's just all over the place, right? Negative cash from operations is a really, really major problem. So I, I'm going to have to give this one, guys, a 0%. Looking now at the revenue, though, this one's not looking too bad, but it's just it's just weird because we got five years ago of $202 million to one year ago of $4.4 billion. That is an increase of 2,079.3%. Main thing here is this massive jump from five to four years ago, 202 million to 2.03 billion. And then from 2.03 billion to $3.25 billion. That's a massive jump, guys. So it's okay that it's in the positive. I like that. The jump's terrify me though. The jumps terrify me because I have shown several times on the channel companies that have outliers just, you know, within a few years and then people think, oh, they'll just keep doing this. And yeah, it doesn't. Now, the one thing that I have to give this company credit for is that even with these jumps, you can still see that they have continued it, which is I guess in a step in the right direction, right? So for this reason, I'm actually going to give this a 30% as a grade. Looking now at the assets minus the liabilities, this one doesn't look too bad. You can see it's been consistently in the positive and nothing too major here, no negatives. However, outlier year was two years ago and then they just came back crashing down, going from 763 million to 4.21 billion to 4.21 million. And you can see this pretty on track with the three year ago value, but it's just, I don't know, it's just a lot of spikes all over the place, right? You got a spike from four to three up, and then a spike from three to two, that was another jump up, and then a crash from two to one. So this is all over the place. The average sale assets, it is $2.86 billion. Average sale liability is $2.44 billion. Doing the difference, we get $428.52 million. I, this is a tough one because I'm gonna give it roughly the same grades, like a 30%. Or maybe even higher, I would say like a 35. Mainly because no negatives. Uh, the spikes are there, but it's not, I don't know. It's just, yeah, it's just it's just weird. It's just a really, really weird kind of metric to see. Now, looking at the cash flow minus the liabilities, uh, this is pretty easy um, seeing that, well, they're just consistently going further and further down. I mean, negative free cash flow. Uh, obviously, you add a negative plus a negative, you're going to get near further negative. So, yeah, I mean, as of one year ago, it is negative $3.3 billion in cash flow minus liabilities. So that's not good. And you can see here that their average, it is negative $1.8 billion. So, yeah, this is this is just an automatic 0%. And looking now at the shares outstanding, we can see that they did spike it up from four to three years ago. But on the five year scale, it is still an increase going from 14 million shares to almost 35 million shares. Again, on the five year, that is an increase of 149.3%. However, you can see here that after that jump from four to three, then they brought it back up a little bit during COVID. You can see 40.1 million to 40.3 million. And after that, they brought it down from 40.3 to 35 million. That's a decrease of 13.4%. I am leaning more towards, I would say, it's actually really, really difficult. I would say at around like 35% or so, just because I don't know where this is heading. I guess you could make the case for like a 50, but that jump is a lot bigger than normal. So I would... I'm going to stay with a 35% on this one. So lastly, we got the cash equivalents that currently hold $80.8 million, an average of almost $111 million. When it comes to the overall grade, guys, I mean, two of these things are zero. And I mean, the free cash flow is by far the biggest one. That's a zero. So we get the net income of 5%, free cash flow zero, revenue 30, assets minus liabilities 35, cash flow minus liability 0%, shares of standing of 35%, overall grade of 16. I mean, yeah, it's just... It's just honestly not not good in my personal opinion. Like it has a lot of problems, negative free cash, that's huge, right? So yeah, it's just, they have a lot of problems when it comes to their fundamentals. But now let's actually take a look at their price and see if at the current price, 
at $29.41, this is looking like a buy. Now, now I'm putting anything, guys, we can see that not just for debt is $83.84. Adjusting for debt, though, this comes down to $10.28. Now, let's input some of these growth values, shall we? We can see here on Seeking Alpha, revenue growth is estimated at 11.5%. I am not going to go 11.5%. I'm going to go something along the lines of like 5, 7, and 9% along those lines. And, well, with a predicted share buyback, this could go either way. This really, really can go either way. So I am going to put at around negative 1 for the lowest assumption. They're going to issue shares at 1%, which, again, that's not really the case for them. But... I don't know where it's going. So I'm going to put zero for the mini assumption. I'm going to put 1% buyback for the highest assumption. Now with this, well, we get the target share prices, not just for debt of $98.99 to $115.71. However, adjusting for debt though, this comes down massively. $26.16 to $41.41. Margin of safety of 5, 10, and 15. This puts me between $22.23 to $39.34. Guys, current share price is 29. So this is actually interesting because, well, um, you could see that aside from adjusting for debt for the lowest assumption, the median and the high assumption are telling me that it is a pretty decent buy. And even to some extent, some margin of safety with the median and high assumptions as well. Now, the problem with this is, again, the fact that their weighted grade is really, really low, guys. I mean, the fundamentals are not that good. So please remember that every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. This is not financial advice. You guys just saw me input the numbers and they changed drastically. You guys have seen the live stream. I have Mike tell me what he thinks for revenue growth and predicted share buybacks. And I then put in my numbers and everything just changes drastically. So please have these calculators available for free. And I give them out for free because I want everybody to have a somewhat of a guide to investing in a company. All of these videos that I make, guys, they're not due diligence. People who say, you're not doing your, your due diligence. This is a terrible video. You didn't go into this and this and this. Right. This is not due, due diligence at all. This is me taking a recommendation from a commenter and, well, um, me going over a brief overview of what the company does, what the numbers are. It's up to you guys to then say, okay... I think that this is going to be like this, so let me do more research on this. And then you make that decision for yourself, okay? I'm not here to make any decision for anybody. So that's just the way that my content is. That's just the way that my channel is. And that's why I give all of these calculators out for free. Link is in the description below. And the best way that you guys can help us if you want to help us grow the channel, guys, is by like, subscribing, and of course, commenting. That really is it, guys. Thank you so much for everybody who does that. We really, really do appreciate it. We're almost up to 2,500 subscribers. Y'all are insane. 2,500 of you mad lads are just, oh my God, thank you so much. Thank you. so We, we really do appreciate it. So, you know, everybody who watches, um, KLL, Tony, you know, we really, really do appreciate it overall. So thank you so much, guys. And if you guys want to help, again, a tip here and there, it's great. We appreciate it. But just help us grow the channel. It's really all we're asking for. Now, let's take a look at this dividend because... Okay, it's not that good. I don't think it's safe in the slightest. You should not invest into a company solely for its dividend. But take a look at this, guys. For $5,725 with a yield of 8%, more than 8%, this is an annual dividend of $486.68. That's insane. I don't trust it, though. So please be very, very careful when it comes to this company's dividend. And of course, if we take a look at the options chains, we can see that there really isn't much of anything here. This is the May 19th expiration. So you have what, like two weeks left? And yet there really isn't much of anything on the put side or even the call side. June 16th, we can see pretty much the exact same thing. So when it comes to options, not the best company to sell puts or calls. All in all, thank you so much for the recommendation. Um, it's an interesting company. I never heard of it before. I don't even think I've been into one of the stores. Maybe I have, maybe I haven't. But regardless, it's an interesting company. I think that it's more of a gamble than an investment. But then again, that's just my personal opinion. But anyways, guys, that pretty much does it for this video. Like if you like, comment, subscribe. It really does help her with the algorithm on YouTube. As I said, you guys can follow us on the new tech sites. Link is in the description below. So with that said, peace out, and we'll see you all next time.